Sandy was a very dramatic example of why we needed immediate uh, and local resilience. Climate change is very personal for our community because of Superstorm Sandy. People experienced catastrophe. People were stuck in buildings on, say, 17th floor, were not able to get out. We had businesses that were totally wiped out. Many champions of this project are people that live right on the river, and they know what they've experienced, and they know that we can't go through this again. The East Side Coastal Resiliency Project is the city's efforts to battle climate change where they're raising the East River Park 10 feet. So we're raising the seawall 10 feet, and with that, elevating the park 10 feet. You wouldn't want to park below grade when a seawall is 10 feet higher than the park. So they're elevating the park so you have unobstructed views over the new raised seawall. Not only that, the elevated ground will then be a barrier for rising sea levels. They're building all new facilities on top of the elevated park. So new tennis courts, basketball courts, gymnasium, athletic fields. The Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project is the country's largest urban climate adaptation project. It's a 2.4 mile long flood system. This was the first of its kind um, in, in New York City. Both roller and sliding gates provide entrances into the park and access to the waterfront from the community, which is very, very important. Public open space is incredibly important in New York City. That parkland is incredibly precious. And so we wanted to make sure that we could really integrate flood protection with parkland. We had to work very closely with the engineers to make sure that we could still have a park on top of all of this, um, while also serving the other systems, um, like drainage and like the flood protection. Decisions that were made underground were going to affect the park at the top. We're protecting 120,000 residents with 28,000 of them in public housing. When folks think of Manhattan, I think folks think of wealthy communities. But what we're able to do is really protect the residents that need it the most. So it's a very complex project. It was a challenge to have to reach out to the community when you're doing a project in a park that is so beloved by the community, so heavily used. That is their waterfront access. That's where they walk and run and picnic. A big portion of the community was against the project from the beginning because it entailed uh, removing trees and closing down portions of the park to do the new construction. The community thought that once the park was removed, the city was going to redevelop it with condos and high-rise apartments. It has been very interesting to explain everything. Get out there and say, this is not going to happen. This park is being rebuilt for you. We are now having a lot of requests for site visits, not only from the media, but local and international governments that are facing the same challenges related to climate change. We have a connection with the city of Tokyo. A group came to New York to look at the project. It gives you this sense that we kind of all have the same problems. And it's like, how do you get things done and also be fair and hear from the community? Um, and so they're thinking about that in Tokyo. It is very clear that climate change is impacting the world, not just my little community, but the way it worked in our community was to deal with it locally and our needs. Um, as cities around the world are building their resilient cities, their resilient towns, um, better infrastructure, they can now look to the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project as an example to follow. We were able to be in the dialogue about what climate change means in New York City. To everyone that was involved, congratulations. <laughs>